Today's video is brought to you by Upcycle Computer Works. They keep computers out of landfills by refurbishing, upgrading, and repairing them to stave off unnecessary e-waste. Upcycling keeps their costs low so they can pass the savings on to you. Used PCs start as low as $89 shipped in the US. And make sure to check out their competitively priced new systems as well. They believe having a working computer is a right. So for every 10 PCs they sell, they donate a laptop to a displaced child in foster care. Think green or greener in 2023. Browse their online store at shopucw.com and use promo code CRAFTYNEWYEAR at checkout to receive 10% off your order now through Valentine's Day. That's shopucw.com and thanks again to Upcycle Computer Works for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. I am no stranger to doing home improvement projects or building desks, as I've done that many different times on the channel. But this is a little bit of a different project. Welcome to my living room, which I don't show off all that often. Uh, we're in need of a multi-use space here in the living room, and it's not going to really feature gaming PCs, but it's also going to be gaming-centric. Let me explain. You see, I've had so much success over the last year or so doing virtualized GPU instances on my server rack, I figured I might as well put a couple of stations here that we could play games at 1080p, 1440, maybe even 4K, but not have any desktop computers out here. So that is going to be the end goal. We're gonna put up a couple of monitors, we're gonna have some bang and audio systems, some shelving for charging all of our tablets and devices around the house, but all of that starts with the desk. So I've gone with the tried and true buy an Ikea countertop and put it anywhere but the kitchen, and we're gonna try to build this system based off the height and size of that. I don't have a lot of other plans here, so it's gonna be a multi-day process getting this all put together, but hopefully the end result is gonna be something that you might be able to replicate in your own house. Let's get started.
So, audio. I went back and forth with a ton of different options when it came to amplification and speakers and how I wanted to mount them. And ultimately, I couldn't find anything that really fit what I was looking for, either aesthetically or quality-wise, that I could just order off Amazon. So, I decided to build a solution myself. Uh, right here is a custom three and a half inch speaker box that I cut out on my laser cutter. Uh, this cost me a grand total of about, oh, I don't know, 60 cents per box out of uh, five mil MDF right here. Uh, I will go ahead and put these plans down in the video description if you want to cut one for yourself. But what this does is we'll mount a three and a half inch speaker uh, and I'm using some Blaupunk GTX 350 three and a half inch dual coil speakers you're pretty run of the mill things that you'd stick into a car. And uh, I'm gonna put those in there and power them with this little handy USB audio amplifier. That is a 50 watt times two stereo. Uh, it takes USB, Bluetooth or auxiliary inputs. So this will be perfect to plug into the USB-C docks that I have and feed audio directly to these speakers, which we're gonna build in under the shelf that I installed into the desk. Everyone with me so far? Cool. So the way I've designed this is I have a little recess for the speaker to sit in right there. We're going to mount the speaker at about a 45 degree angle with the wires on the bottom there. I've got a couple screws that'll hold this in place. And there's two. And then we just need to put a speaker grill on it. So the end result should look something about like that. Now again, obviously this isn't going to be the best quality audio that's out there. And uh, honestly, I did think about going all the way for a full custom speaker bar with like the Bose sound channels in the back to get a little bit more bass out of a fairly small package. But in the end, I decided to go with essentially a tiny little book bookshelf speaker. And so far, I think the results are turning out fantastic. All the stuff to do is sand this up, paint it black so it'll blend in, and then I also have to mill out uh, the back panel and my mounting system. But I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so the speakers are finally done and mounted. Uh, this was a really fun design project and I'm glad I went this direction because the look turned out fantastic. And I have plugged these in and they sound great as well. Uh, probably not something that I could have bought and come out with this good of a look for the $50 that I spent for each of the sides. Not bad overall. Now the mounts were a little bit tricky to figure out because I wanted them to be essentially invisible. And what I came up with was this little grooved slot system. So all we have to do is slide these into the bracket that I also cut out on my laser and you've got a seamless, nearly invisible set of mounts for all the speakers. But now we come to the finish line and probably the most tedious part of this build, as if making custom speaker boxes wasn't enough. And that is the power and the wiring. Did you ever get so pissed off that you built a box? Well, I hadn't, but uh, this last week I did. Uh, this is my new custom power box. Let's take a look at what's inside. All right, if I can have my helper remove the lid for me. 
There we go. So here is what the inside of the power box is going to look like. Uh, I couldn't find a surge protector that was small enough yet. So at the moment, I just have a three uh, prong extension cord in here that is going to be replaced with a proper surge protector. But pretty much everything on this desk runs on 12 volt. And instead of running literally a dozen different 12 volt transformers, I figured why not just get one giant 12 volt transformer? So that's what we have there. This is a transformer that's normally used for uh, powering outdoor LEDs. This is a 200 watt, uh, completely waterproof uh, 12 volt driver. And over here we have a switch block, a uh, fuse block that you would find in a car. Uh, this is going to be used to distribute all of that 12 volt power and each of the individual legs of this is fused. Not that we're going to need a fuse. None of these devices are really high current devices, but uh, this was a, believe it or not, cheaper and easier solution than getting a set of terminal blocks to distribute the 12 volt power. So what ticked me off so much that I went and built a box out of cedar fence boards? Well, I was looking for some kind of a box that I could store all of my power adapters in, and I really couldn't find anything. They do make power supply or surge protector protectors, boxes that you can put surge protectors in, but all of them were ugly. None of them that I found would mount to the wall or hold the power bricks for the USB-C docks that I have, or even that 12 volt transformer. There was nothing in the size that I needed. So I started shopping for some alternatives and I went looking in random furniture sections from medicine cabinets to actual circuit breaker boxes and nothing in the price range that I wanted. Most of them were well over $100 to get the size that I needed. Finally, I was on Home Depot's website and I stumbled across a planter box that was made out of cedar and looked to be about the right size. It was 24 inches by eight by eight, a pretty nice little compact size. However, that box was $48 and not even in stock, which means I would have had to pay to ship it to my house for essentially two cedar fence posts that have been cut down into the shape of a box and nailed together. And I figured, well, heck, I can knock something like that out in about an hour. So I did. And if we have a look under the desk, this is just gonna mount up something like that. So let's get to it. All right, after all that work, the desk is finally done. And I have to say, I am so, so pleased with the way this whole thing turned out. What started as just an idea between me and my wife, uh, now we have a desk in our living room where anyone with a laptop or a dockable system can bring it in, plug in a single USB-C cable, start working, start doing homework, start playing games. This has been so incredibly useful for the couple of days that we've had it up and running. Let's go over some of the finer details and then we'll wrap this thing up. So like I mentioned, any USB-C based laptop that will accept a docking station should hook up to these stations. Now for the USB docks themselves, I went with a Dell K17S, I believe is the model number on that. I'll have parts lists for everything down in the video description. But this has not only five USB ports on it. It's got audio, it's got HDMI, mini display port, and gigabit ethernet. Plus, these included a 180 watt power adapter to charge the laptop or power external displays if you plug them into your laptop. It's a pretty incredible little deck, and I only paid $60 each for these directly off Amazon. 
Now that is a refurbished price. I'm not sure how long that deal is going to be available, but I have been thrilled with these so far. For monitors, I've got a pair of Pixio displays here, but they are two very different versions. This one right here is one of the 27-inch 1080p models, but this one runs at 240 hertz. This will be my wife's primary desk, as most of what she's going to be doing here is playing games. Over on the left, I have another Pixio display, again another 27-inch monitor, this time in a 1440p 144 hertz variant, as I'm going to be doing a little bit of work up here and being able to keep an eye on the kids while writing screen scripts or doing some other stuff. So both of these stations are going to come in extremely handy for both of us. Like I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, the desk itself is just an Ikea countertop. This is a 74 inch countertop. I've used these so many times over the years for tasks and tables and pretty much anything but their intended use case as a countertop. Uh, I've used some of their cheaper models, not their engineered ones, but uh, they have some laminate covered ones. Those ones tend to sag after a while. Uh, this one, this particular countertop is the Pinarp, and it is an engineered with a veneer top on it. Uh, these tend to not sag and not need nearly as much support. In fact, the countertops that I have downstairs in my office on my editing station, those are also the engineered countertops and they literally only have, I think, three legs for the entire L-shaped desk. And that has not shown any tendency to droop at all. The audio amplifiers that I picked up for this have been working pretty well. Again, they are a stereo 50 watt amplifier. And for the speakers, I wound up making my own enclosure and mounting system. I'm really thrilled with the way this turned out. Now, again, I probably could have gone a cheaper route and you know, not gotten so fancy with all of this, but I wanted something that was very sleek, very, fashionable because again this is my living room i want it to look nice and i i'm thrilled with the way this turned out especially for essentially a first draft i drafted this cut it out and assembled these boxes all in a single day so these did not exist <laughs> before i uh i started putting them together i'm i'm really pleased with these now again, the mounting bracket itself is pretty simple. It's just a little grooved slot and it slides right in here underneath the shelving unit that we put in above the desk. It's very streamlined, it looks fantastic, and sound quality is pretty decent. Now there's a couple more things that I do want to do to this desk before I will actually call it done, but I think we're gonna call it good enough for the video. First off, I wanna do a little bit more cable management under the desk, probably just some zip tie cable hangers to keep the power and audio cables from dangling loose down there. I've also want to install some 12 volt lighting up under here so each of these individual stations can have a little bit of directional light. That would be a huge upgrade, especially if you don't have a light up keyboard. Uh, other than that, I think I'm pretty much just ready to start using this desk. And I know my wife is extremely looking forward to being able to sit out here and play Minecraft with our oldest daughter. Anyway, that's going to do it for me in this video. Let me know what you thought about this one. I know it's a little bit of a different take for me here on the channel. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already, and follow me on Mastodon at Craft Computing at hostex.social. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.